Hey guys, I'm Malvika, PD trainer at PD Pathfinder. So today, in today's live class, we are going to talk about uh, latest strategies for reorder paragraphs, which is one of the crucial question type for your reading section scores. So in this uh, lecture today, we are going to talk about several strategies as well as we are trying going to solve some latest PT exam questions related to reorder paragraphs. So just give me a second, let me share the screen and we'll start with the session. Uh, I hope guys you're able to hear me. Hi Sanjeev, hi Anand, hi Sri. So let's get started with our class for today. Please type yes if you're able to hear me. Yeah. All right, so um, in reorder paragraphs, basically what happens is you get a passage on the screen in which the text uh, is arranged in a random order. So there will be two types of panels on the screen when you look at the question in your exam. One is called a source panel and the other panel is called as the target panel. So in the source panel, you will get several text boxes that you are required to rearrange in correct order in the target panel. So depending on how many of the text boxes you have arranged in the correct order, you will be able to get this course. Uh, Hi uh, uh, Arbab, hi Sanjeev, hi Sri. So let's get started with the scoring criteria for this question. So now when we talk about the scoring criteria for reorder paragraphs, it's a little bit different than the other question types. So in this question, basically you are required to mark the pairs correctly. So for example, let's say if the correct sequence of our answer is A, C, D, E, and B. So it's not going to give you scores based on the position of the question, right? Of, of the text boxes. It's going to give you scores for the correct pairs. So let's say if our first pair in this case is A and C. So you will be getting one point for that. If your A and C pair is correct, you'll be getting one point. The next pair is C and D, then D and E and E and B. So when you get a question in which you have five pair, uh, five sentences, that is five text boxes, in that case, it's going to carry four points. And when you get a question in which you just have four sentences, that means it's going to carry three points. This is something that you need to make sure that you do it correctly. And in here, it doesn't matter, let's say, for example, if you marked something like this, let's say your, your first sentence is E, then you have written B, then A, C, and D, for example. So in this case, even though the first pair was A and C, you have marked it as E and B. So E and B is correct pair in here. So for that particular case, you will be getting one point. That's very crucial for you to understand. So it doesn't matter what is the sequence of the sentences. If the pairs are correct, you will be getting the scores. So here in this case, B and A, we don't have any pair. So we will not get any points for that. Then A and C is correct. So for that as well, you will be able to get one point. And for C and D as well, you will be able to get one point. So out of four points, you will be in this case scoring three points. So I hope the scoring criteria for reorder paragraphs is clear enough. Now let's get started with our strategies for reorder paragraphs. So the first thing, the foremost thing that you need to do whenever you get a question on the screen is to read all the text boxes one by one to yourself. Don't read the half sentences. I want you guys to read the entire sentences thoroughly so that you have an idea what the writer is trying to convey in there. It's very crucial that you are able to do that. So read all text boxes fully, one by one, 
And then it's time to find your topic sentence, a sentence that is introducing the theme of the entire paragraph, a sentence that is very crucial for the understanding of the entire passage. So that's what you're going to do in there. So let's get uh, started with how you can identify the topic sentence or your first sentence of the passage. So remember guys, whenever you are trying to solve a question, you're going to find out the sentence firstly, which is introducing the theme. And secondly, you're going to find a sentence that is also uh, an independent sentence. It's not going to rely on any other sentence for meaning. So these two characteristics, they are for the first sentence. Now, always it's going to give you an introduction of the topic or an overview of the main idea or it's going to give you an idea about the definition of the theme of the record, uh, you know, question. So that's what you need to do. And remember that it's going to be an independent sentence. By independent sentence, we mean to say that a sentence which is not relying on any other sentence for meaning, which is going to stand alone on its own. So that sentence is going to be your first sentence. Sometimes the topic sentence, they don't contain any discourse markers. They don't contain any pronouns. Just in case, for example, if a pronoun is present. So in that particular case, it might be referring to the noun present in the same sentence. So that's why it's crucial that you read the entire sentence completely, all the text boxes completely and identify which one is the first sentence. So that's something very crucial that you start with that properly. Now the step two. It's important that you are able to find the other se se uh, sentences in the sequence correctly. So in that case, you need to identify the flow of the text. Now, there are several patterns that can be found when you're trying to solve reorder paragraphs. Uh, it could be related to the different tenses that we use. Sometimes some event starts in the past. Then the writer talks about the present time period and then they are talk, uh, making predictions about the future. So that could be sometimes the logical flow of the text. Sometimes the writer might mention the problem or they might be discussing the problems in detail and then they talk about the solutions of the problem. So first thing will be related to the problems and then you can find out the solutions from there. Now, the next thing could also be uh, like the writer has introduced the idea about a certain topic. And then to prove that idea or prove their point, they are giving some examples. So remember, whenever examples are given in your text boxes, it is always going to come after the main idea that it explains. So first idea and then it's followed by the example. Same thing happens with the questions and answers. Always the writer will mention the questions first and then they will try to answer that particular question. So this is the logical flow of the text that you might be looking for in your sentences. Again, it's very crucial that you do that. Now, apart from this kind of logical flows and sequences, there are some language patterns that you should be able to identify because in exam a uh, lot of complex texts comes along and if you don't have any background knowledge about the grammar or certain type of things it's going to be problematic so in that particular case you need to know those important rules right so let's talk about those language patterns now before we start with the language patterns discussion, I would like to share one thing that you have to make sure that you understand the meaning that is conveyed in each and every sentence of the question. So meaning is very much crucial because that's going to help you in sequencing the sentences logically. Now let's talk about the language patterns because sometimes the language patterns are present and if you don't look at the meaning of the sentence as overall, 
there might be some issues with the sequence of the sentence that you have arranged. So always look at both the pictures, language patterns as well as the meaning of the sentences. Now the first language uh, pattern that we're going to talk about is related to linking words. Now what are linking words? So as the name suggests, linking words are the words that can connect two different things together. So uh, there are a lot of different types of connectors that uh, are present in English through which we can link the sentences together, link two words together or two phrases together. So those words are called as linking words. Now some common examples that are associated with linking words are, for example, but, however, and, thus, for example, etc. So this kind of keywords, they help you to connect the two sentences together. Now, how can they help? So it's important that you are able to identify the function of this kind of linking words whenever you're looking at the text. So for example, let's say if a sentence is starting with but. So you have to analyze its function. What type of sentences does it connect? Is it connecting to same kind of ideas? Is it connecting to contrasting ideas? So that's how you can get an idea about them. So normally with but, we always try to connect to opposite information together, right? So here, but, so let's say if the writer has talked about the advantages of something before but, okay? And after but, what kind of information is going to come? Is it going to be advantage again or is it going to be disadvantage again? You can post your answers in the comments. Is it going to be an advantage after but? Or is it going to be a disadvantage that is going to be talked about after but? Yep. So in here, we use but as a contrasting connector. So whenever we want, uh, want to mention an opposite idea, if we're going to talk about disadvantage so depends on what kind of information is present before but or depends on what kind of information is present in that but containing sentence so let's say if the writer is talking about disadvantage in the but containing sentence then in that particular case you need to look for the sentence that is having opposite information to the information that is mentioned in the but containing sentence. So if you use this kind of clues, it's going to give you a very good idea that what would be the sentence that's going to come before but containing sentence, right? So we have a good example in here. One of the sentence is starting with but. So I want you guys to have a look at this sentence, the first sentence on the screen and find out which sentence contains the opposite information from the sentence number two, three and four, which information is contrasting to the sentence containing but. And you can post your answers in the comments so I can check that whether you're doing it correctly or not. Find out the sentence that contains opposite information to the sentence containing but. I'm just going to wait for some while for you to find out the information and then we will proceed further. So maybe 30 seconds or so. Quickly read the sentence. So here in the sentence, it says, but in Scotland, three banks are still allowed to issue bank notes. So it's talking specifically about Scotland in here. So it says three banks are still allowed to issue bank notes. And we have answers uh, flowing through. 
uh, Ashish says the sentence number five has opposite information to the sentence containing but. So good work Ashish. So uh, here this is the sentence that has opposite information. So it says in most countries it is only the government through their central banks who are permitted to issue currency. So it's kind of contradictory statement to the statement present here. So my question now is which sentence is going to come first and which sentence is going to follow? Is it the sentence number fifth or is it the sentence number first? Which one will be your first sentence and which one will be your next sentence in the sequence? Good work, Raymond. So of the next sentence, the fifth sentence, I'll just read it for you. It says, in most countries, it is only the government through their central banks who are permitted to issue banknotes or issue currency. Which sentence is going to be your first sentence? Good work, Raman. Good work, Ashish. So your first statement in this case is the sentence number five. And then it's going to be followed by the sentence number one. So in this particular way, you can use the approach of linking words. You can always read the sentence that contains that particular link, uh, linking word and identify its role and then use the meaning of the sentence and then find out the other sentences that which one has the opposite information or let's say the writer was using for example moreover so in this case moreover we know that it joins two similar kind of information together so you in this case you will find out what moreover sentence contains and then you will read the other sentences with respect to that and find out which sentence contains the same kind of information. And you will put that sentence just before the moreover sentence. So this is what we call as linking words approach. I hope that is clear. Good work, Daval. Good work, Shrey. Good work, Aati. Now let's talk about the second approach. Now, this approach is very crucial. Sometimes in exams, we have some complex we order paragraph questions, but this makes it easy for us. So remember one simple rule, whenever we are talking about full forms and short form approach, in that case, full form is always going to be coming before the short form. So it's, al it's always going to come before short form. Okay, so for example, you have two different sentences. In one sentence, they have mentioned Dr. Pekel, and in another sentence, they have mentioned Dr. John Pekel. So, in this case, which sentence is going to be your first sentence? Is it going to be the sentence, uh, let's say this is the second sentence, for example, and this is the first sentence? So, is it going to be a first sentence, Dr. John Pekel? containing information or Dr. Pekel containing information. You can post your answers in the comments. Remember the rule, full form is always going to come before short form. So the sentence that's going to be Having the first position is going to be the sentence that contains Dr. John Pekel. And then it can be followed by the sentence number two, which contains Dr. Pekel. Good work, Aarti, Raymond. Good work. So some examples might also include the name of people like Karl Marx. It can be referred to as Marx in the next sentence or Let's say if, uh, it's a name of a president. So it says President George W. Bush. So this can be referred to as President Bush in the next sentence or as the president in the next sentence. 
So same thing applies with the name of the cities or countries. So for example, if I say Melbourne, it can become the city in the next sentence. Or let's say India, it can become as the city, uh, the country in the next sentence. So the country is going to come after India and the city is going to come after Melbourne and the president is going to come after the name of that person. So this approach is called as full form versus short form approach. Now, the third approach that we are going to talk about is related to pronouns. Now, what are pronouns, guys? And how do we use pronouns? So, when we look at different word forms in our last session on reading fill in the blanks, we talked about different type of word forms such as nouns, words, adjectives and adverbs. If you haven't watched that video, I'll post the link in the comments so if you can have a look at that video as well. So pronouns basically are the words that are referring back to a noun. So for example, if I say John is my neighbor. Then John is an intelligent student. John is working part-time. So if I uh, write everything about John like this, it, it sounds a little bit odd. So whenever writer wants to talk about someone or some place, He's going to replace those nouns with the pronouns in order to make it more fluent and more coherent, right? So here I can say uh, John is neighbor. He is an intelligent student. He is working part time. So in this case, he is referring back to the noun that is John in the first sentence. So the rule here is that always the noun is going to come before the pronoun and pronoun is always going to refer back to the noun. So in this case, he, she, it, him, her, these, those and this. All of these pronouns are always referring back to the now, so the position of the sentences in one sentence, for example, it's talking about the noun. For example, here, John is neighbor or John is my neighbor, right? So this sentence is going to be the first sentence and then it can be followed by the other two sentences that he is an intelligent student, he is working part time. So remember the rule, noun and then it is followed by the pronoun. Now, if you look at my screen, it says two types of pronouns, right? There are a lot of different categories of pronoun, but out of which the two ones are more important ones. So we are going to talk about them. There are two types of pronouns here, personal pronouns and demonstrative pronouns. Now, personal pronouns are he, she, it, him, her, etc. The demonstrative pronouns include pronouns like these, those, and this. Now, what's the difference? Now, whenever we are talking about pronouns, uh, the personal pronouns, they refer back to the noun itself. So, we were talking about John in the previous example. So, it can be refer, uh, referred to as he in the next sentence. But when we talk about demonstrative pronouns, these, those, this, etc., they refer back to a noun 
or a noun phrase. But if you look at the, uh, you know, uh, form of this kind of words, the first two ones, these and those, they refer to a plural noun or a plural noun phrase. But when we talk about this, it refers back to singular noun or singular noun phrase. It could be either of those things. So whenever you find this kind of words like these, those and this, ask yourself what noun or noun phrase it, it is referring back to. And you will find your sequence for the answer. I hope that is clear. Let's have a look at an example here. So we have two sentences. The first sentence says Marquez arrived in October 1577 at the abandoned town of Santa Alina with two ships carrying prefabricated posts and heavy planking. In the next sentence it says he erected Fort St. Marcos in six days in defense against a Native American attack as the one that forced the abandonment of the town a year earlier. So can we find any pronouns in any of the sentences, guys? And what pronoun can you find? You can post your answers in the chat. Which sentence contains the pronoun? And what is that pronoun? Good work. Yep. So if the sentence, the second sentence, it has the pronoun which is he, right? So as soon as you see this kind of pronouns, you ask yourself, is the noun present in the same sentence that it is referring back to? Or is it referring back to a noun in some other sentence? So if the noun is not present in the same sentence, so we don't have anything that is referring back to he in here. So we need to look at the sentences, um, you know, other sentences in the question. Read the sentences and find out which sentence has that particular noun. So in this case, we have Marquis, which is a noun, maybe a name of a person. So he is referring back to Marquis. So the Marquis containing sentence is going to be your first sentence. And then it's going to be followed by the sentence containing he. So the position here is one followed by two. So I hope this strategy is clear. Now let's move to the next strategy. It's about articles approach. Now whenever we are talking about articles, we are basically trying to look for the articles such as a, n, and the. So there are two types of articles in English, guys. One is definite article and the other one is indefinite article. So whenever we talk about indefinite article, it's about a and n. And remember that this A and N, they always are introducing general idea about that particular noun. Remember, we use articles to introduce the nouns. We use articles to mention the nouns later on in the text as well. So articles are always going to come before the noun or they could be article followed by the adjective and a noun or it could be article plus noun. So here article plus adjective plus noun. So it could be both of the possibilities depending on what kind of thing the writer has used there. So 
whenever I use A or N, for example, let's say if I'm saying a chair. Right? So I'm just talking about in general related to the noun chair. And later on, if I want to talk about it again in my text or, or passage, I'm going to use the before it. So it will become the chair later on. So first we introduce the noun by putting a or n before it. And then it can be referred back by saying the chair. So the position here is always a or n coming as the first sentence and they can be followed by the in the later sentence but remember one simple rule here listen to me very carefully because this is something that might be very confusing because sometimes in the sentences that we get in exam there are a lot of us and those and you think that okay this sentence contains the and then there is a noun but then you ask yourself how can we uh, this be the first sentence right so one simple rule to clarify all your doubts this strategy is only going to work when both the nouns that you're using are same so if the nouns are different this strategy is never going to work so for example let's say if i have something like this a chair and a green chair can you guys tell me is the noun same in both the cases here is the noun same you can let me know your answers in the chat Is the noun same in a chair and a green chair? Yes, the noun is same. It is chair. Remember guys, I told you that articles could be followed by an adjective and then a noun or articles could be followed by directly the noun. So in this case, still the noun is same. So the strategy is still going to work. A chair is going to be your first sentence and then a green chair could be your next sentence or it could be the green chair. So this sentence and this approach is still going to work in this case. But let's say for example if I have a chair and the table. Can you tell me, are the nouns same in here? A chair and the table. So in this particular case, the approach is not going to work because we have two different nouns, right? So any of the sentence can come before and any of the sentence can follow. There is no link between the two. So don't apply the strategies when the nouns are different. Only apply this if the nouns are same. Now one more thing I want to talk here is about plural nouns. So we use a or n that is indefinite articles only before the nouns that are singular. We never use a or n before a plural article, uh, noun. So for example, if I say a uh, chairs, can I say that? A uh, chairs, is it making sense? No, right? So whenever the nouns are plural, for example, if I say chairs, so in this case, there will be no article and then it can become as the chairs later on. So we can use the before a plural noun 
but we can't use a or n before plural nouns. So in this case, the chairs containing sentence is going to be a first sentence and then it could be followed by the sentence containing the chairs. So that's the strategy in here. I hope it's clear. This is quite complex approach. So remember the simple tricks in here and you will be able to solve the questions correctly. Now, the last approach for today is related to keywords repetition. Now, sometimes when the writer wants to give some additional information or wants to give some extra information about something or wants to explain something in detail, they might be using the same keywords in the next sentence as, as the subject of the sentence. So that's why this approach is called a subject verb approach, wherein the object of the sentence, the first sentence becomes the subject of the next sentence and it's followed by a new verb and a new object. So for example, um, let's have a look at these two sentences. Okay, so here it says he erected Fort San Marcos in six days in defense against a Native American attack, such as the one that forced the abandonment of the town a year earlier. So he erected, and the object of the sentence here it says the abandonment of the town a year earlier. So if you read the next sentence, it says the town had flourished nearing 400 residents since its establishment more than a decade earlier in 1566 by Pedro Menendez de Evils, who had founded La Florida and St. Augustine the year before. So we have one keyword that is repeating in both the sentences, guys. What is that particular keyword? So if you look at the subject position, here we had the town, right? So it's the subject of the third sentence. And the object of the se uh, second sentence was again, abandonment of the town year earlier. So the town is again repeating as the object. So in this case, the object of the second sentence is the subject of the next sentence. So maybe in, in this case, the writer wants to talk about the town. He wants to give more information about the town. And that's why the information is repeated in the two consecutive sentences. So this kind of approach is called as keywords repetition approach or subject, verb and an object approach. I hope the doubts are clear. Because... Sometimes, you know, the information always is going to flow logically from one sentence to the next sentence. And sometimes you have a lot of information in the sentences. So you need to find out which, uh, in which place it is used as the object and in which place it is used as the subject. So the place where it is used as the object is going to come before the place where it is used as the subject. Because subject, uh, object always becomes the subject of the next sentence. So that was all about the reorder paragraphs. Guys, it's also important that once you have solved the reorder paragraph question, it's a good idea to quickly read the sentences in the order that you've arranged them in to check whether the sentences are making sense are they linked logically to each other? Is there a logical flow between them or not? If not, then, I, then make sure that there is something wrong in your answer. You again might want to go through it. So try rearranging them in that case. Always use meaning of the sentences and the tricks that we talked about in here to solve the reorder paragraphs correctly. Now, we'll have one quick question for today's class. For, it's one of the latest exam question. Uh, so let's talk about this one. 
I'm going to give you two minutes because two minutes are more than enough when you want to solve one reorder paragraph. Okay, now this question contains five sentences. I want you to read the sentences and find out the correct sequence for the sentences. One, two, three, and three, four, and five. So I'll be reading in, uh, them in for you. Just try to rearrange the sequences and find out what's your correct sequence for them. Remember the rules. First, read all the sentences to yourself completely and identify which sentence is introducing the theme. Always ask yourself which sentence is my topic sentence. And then look at the other sentences for the language patterns or the logical connections. So just quick two minutes to solve this question. All right, so let's read the sentences. It says, the brain is our most treasured possession. So here maybe it's talking about brain. And if we are saying that it's the tre treasured possession, then now the next sentence, it says, the barrier serves, as, uh, serves a vital role, but it uh, but is also possesses a tremendous sorry but it also poses a tremendous challenge for scientists developing drugs to treat brain based disorders so here we are talking about the barrier so the linking is not present so they can't be linked together now the next sentence it says it coordinates the movements uh, words relationships and the ability to pass on our genes so we have one pronoun in here ask yourself which noun it is referring back to so that might help you to find out the sequence in there next sentence it says our body therefore protects the organ fear fiercely the central nervous system polices particles traveling through the blood stream and invites the only invites only the safest in our cognitive chambers this selective process occurs due to a proactive boundary known as the blood bar brain barrier so in here again here we had one connector right and here we again have one pronoun So maybe it's referring back to a noun. So find out which sentence contains that noun. So which sentence is going to be a first sentence in here, guys? Which sentence is introducing the theme? We already have an answer from Ashish. What about others, other people? Did you get your answers? All right, so let's solve this question together. So the first sentence in this case is the sentence number one. It's introducing the theme, so it's our topic sentence. So this is your first sentence. The brain is our most treasured possession. Now, if you look at the sentence number three, it says it coordinates our movements, our words, our relationship and ability to pass on our genes. Right? Good work, Anmol. Good work, Ashish. 
So if the next sentence in our sequence is the sentence number three. So this will be your second sentence. So it is referring back to what? The brain mentioned in the first sentence. So it's referring back to the noun. Now it's uh, now here it, it was talking about why it is the most treasured possession. Right? Now your next thing is to find out what would be the next one in your sequence. So if you look at the sentence number four, it says our body therefore protects the organ fearless, fiercely. So why it is protecting? Because it is serving so many different type of functions which is mentioned in the sentence number three. So the sentence number four is next in your sequence. It will be your third sentence. Now we have two sentences left. It says the barrier serves a vital role. And if you look at the sentence here, the blood brain barrier. Right? So which keyword is repeating in here? It's the word barrier. So remember that subject, verb and object approach. So the object of the sentence always becomes as the subject of the next sentence. And it's followed by a new verb and a new object. So in this case, the object is present in the sentence number five, right? So this will be your next sentence in the sequence. So your sentence number four is the sentence number five. And then lastly, it will be your sentence number two, which will be your fifth sentence. So the correct sequence in this case is 1, 3, 4, 5 and 2. Now if you look at the sentence number 5, it says this selective process. It was also pronounced. So it was referring back to a noun phrase present in the previous sentence. And that noun phrase was related to the process of uh, allowing certain type of uh, particles to move through your central nervous system. Right? Uh, through your bloodstream. And certain things were not allowed to do that. Right? So that's why this information this selective process so which selective process the process of policing the particles traveling through the bloodstream and inviting only the safest in our cognitive chamber so they only invite the safest cognitive uh, you know particles to move into your cognitive chamber so this fifth sentence is related to the sentence number four and that's why it will be four and then five and then finally the sentence number two so i hope you are able to understand how we solve the questions correctly so i got i uh, i guess guys this will be it for today and yes i also wanted to share some information for those who are not present in our whatsapp groups we have a free WhatsApp support group for PT preparation. If you want to join one of our groups, please message me on WhatsApp. My number is present uh, in the lower part of the video. So you can uh, take my number from there and just text me uh, or uh, text me on WhatsApp. And let me know if you want to join our free WhatsApp group for PT preparation. Uh, also from August 16, we are going to start with one uh, with group classes for the students. So if you are interested to join uh, one of our group classes, it will be at uh, $250 for one month. So if you are uh, looking forward to that, you can also contact me on the number that is given in the video. So thank you everyone for being with me today and I hope this will help you with your preparation related to PTE reading. 
good luck guys and keep practicing don't forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so that you don't uh, you never miss an update from us you will always be notified if you click that bell icon whenever i post the video and tomorrow i'm going to post another video about write from dictations which are repeated and are important for the august month so if you're uh, booked your you have booked your exam in august or if you're looking forward to take a test in august do practice all those write from dictations that i post in tomorrow's class thank you guys for attending the class today um so i'll be signing off now thanks everyone Thank you, Ati.